I'm meteorologist Kit Thomas joining you now in the Weather Center at ABC 24. And we're talking about Hurricane Milton this evening. I want to bring sort of a breakdown of this hurricane and what impacts it's going to have to Florida and maybe to any of your plans that you might have for the fall break time frame here. This is really going to wreak some havoc across lower Florida, so we want to break that down. But let's look into this, some of the details of Milton right now. A Category 5 hurricane. This is already well within the top 10 strongest hurricanes on record in both the Gulf of Mexico and for the entire uh, Atlantic Basin, setting many records, of course. But uh, we want to dive into some of the anatomy of this. 180 mile per hour winds. That's the core maximum strength of the wind speed in this hurricane. And the pressure is down to 897 millibars. That sets it at, as the fifth lowest pressure ever recorded for any hurricane in the Atlantic Basin. Hurricane Wilma, also in October, cataclysm. Category 5 Gulf of Mexico storm uh, back in 2005. It set the record at 882, so that's some context. It's still about 15 millibars away from the record holder, but it is by no means done with its history or its uh, forecast at least. So looking at infrared satellite, that's what we've been seeing. That shows you the temperature of the clouds. When we zoom into this storm, you can see these bright pink, these hot pink colors that have been showing up in this greater field of gray. So we've got very tall cloud tops that are just getting ripped around this whole central disk. It's a very symmetrical storm. And that's one of the things we really see with the most powerful hurricanes like uh, Milton is. But also notice in the center there, you've got the eye at the start of this loop six hours ago. It was very clear all the way down uh, past the reds, greens to the blues, to gray, just very clear eye on visible satellite. You can see almost clear down to the ocean, but it's been contracting over the last six hours. That's possibly what's known as an eyeball replacement cycle beginning. Sometimes when we see that though, it's like a, a figure skater bringing their arms in and tightening up the circulation, making things spin faster. We've certainly seen it increasing. Now here's a look at the forecast, category five right now. In the next several hours, it'll eventually begin to weaken, uh, but not until it actually strengthens to 185 miles per hour. That would tie it for the second strongest Atlantic hurricane on record. 190 is the record for uh, Hurricane Allen. I believe that was 1990. But by uh, the time it's getting closer to Florida, though, it is going to be encountering a lot of shear. Shear is bad news for hurricanes. It begins to uh, weaken them, rip them apart. So by Thursday, it is still a powerful Category 3 hurricane at 125 miles per hour. Again, that's Thursday, 2 a.m., late Wednesday night, early Thursday morning, making landfall or possibly already having made landfall. The thing with the cone is it's the center could be anywhere within it at these timestamps. And then eventually it does exit probably around the space coast of Florida as a category one hurricane still, and then it will gradually weaken as it gets out towards Bermuda. But if you are going to uh, Florida anytime soon, you want to keep in mind that this is going to be a disaster zone for the next several days, if not a couple of weeks, really depending on where it is. So if you have any fall break plans, Keep this in mind. You might want to reschedule or altogether cancel them if you can, because uh, the era, area around uh, Tampa up to Cedar Key and down to Fort Myers all the way back to Orlando is under hurricane warning. They're going to see some extremely high winds. That's going to cause a lot of damage. So a lot of property is going to be damaged. A lot of trees are going to be damaged. Many people are actually evacuating from the coast farther inland. So if you have places, uh, plans inland, uh, that actually might be a little more congested than they're used to uh, with the people who have evacuated and maybe displaced from their homes for the next several weeks. Take a look at the storm surge impacts though. This is the main impact that we're going to see along the coastline, not just in, not inland, but uh, all the way up to Charleston. We've got some storm surge expected up to three feet there. Jacksonville and into the St. John's River, we could see three to six feet of storm surge, but really on the Gulf Coast of Florida. That's where we're going to see the main impacts of the storm surge. Tampa Bay, 
the whole region uh, could see some pretty intense storm surge, especially on the eastern shores of the bays there. So around 10 to 15 feet of surge is expected. Venice Beach over 12 feet is possible. And then Charlotte Harbor also looking at 6 to 10 feet of storm surge. And one of the adages that the Hurricane Center and a lot of uh, National Weather Service offices will, will uh, repeat is run from the water, hide from the wind. So if you're farther inland and you don't have any storm surge impacts, you can shelter in place. If you feel uncomfortable and you feel the need to evacuate, do that at your discretion, but uh, they urge people to evacuate from the water because that just rises and it's, it continues to uh, create even more damage there. So that's one of the things that uh, we're keeping in mind here. The storm surge is going to be the most devastating impact along the coast as well as the highest wind speeds. Now take a look at this. One thing, uh, I'll pause this before we get into it. Notice this has the green colors on it. This is indicating that it's category one. So this model is doing a very poor job of modeling how strong it is. However, it does a good job at modeling the size of the hurricane. Right now, since it's a category five, it is very narrow strip of category five hurricane force winds. But notice the size there, the scale of this, uh, hurricane as it broadens out through its lifetime. So we'll push this through until tomorrow afternoon. Notice it's starting to broaden and of course the core is beginning to broaden. Those green colors indicating the category one force winds. As we get into Wednesday early morning, it's getting even more broad and it's filling up the screen. We haven't zoomed in or out with the camera here and then it becomes all the way up to the big bend of Florida and almost down to the keys. That's the tropical storm force wind field. So this storm is going to get enormous in the next couple of days. So even if you're not going to Tampa, where we're going to see the highest storm surge, we're still going to feel the force of the tropical storm winds, as well as the hurricane force winds in a very broad area of the coast of Florida here. Now, one thing to keep in mind is just sort of the evolution of hurricanes. You get the initial tropical storm force winds very near the center, and then it eventually peaks up there to a hurricane. It might plateau there for a little bit and you'll still be a category one hurricane, but notice how it's getting broader. The strong winds are getting wider across this and then you get that peak again. This is rapid intensification. A new eye wall forms and it peaks there up to major hurricane status and then the whole wind field broadens and becomes a very powerful hurricane system that brings that broad scale. So that's what we were seeing there on that last graphic, that broadening wind field, it is going to have a very very wide reaching uh, impact here across Florida. One last look again, a category five hurricane, 180 mile per hour winds. The pressure is under 900 millibars. That is a, a rare select few hurricanes that have ever achieved this intensity. Fortunately, it will weaken, but it is going to uh, get larger and still be very powerful at landfall. So if you or if anyone you know is going to be impacted by this across Central Florida, make sure that they uh, know where to evacuate to or know if they need to evacuate. Good resource is uh, floridadisaster.org slash K-N-O-W, know, uh, know your zone, know where you need to evacuate. At the time of this recording, uh, zones A, B, and C were all uh, under mandatory evacuation notice. So uh, do heed those warnings, heed the advisories from the National Hurricane Center as this is an evolving system. And as we get closer to the storm, we'll know about where it will be making landfall and where we will see that highest hurricane uh, storm surge. For now though, I'm meteorologist Kit Thomas for ABC 24. Thank you for joining us.